Morning folks. Grizzly old day out. Uh, getting back from uh, from a few days of vacation. The wife's gone back to work this morning, so I'm gonna get my canoe finished. So the, I got it all sanded off here now, and uh, next step is to uh, get the gel coat on. So I'm gonna start that process right now and uh, take you through it. Probably do it on time lapse, just to speed it up a bit. And uh, actually got some other things to put on there after I get the gel coat dried and uh, take you along for that little journey. So anyway, stay tuned and uh, we'll get her all completed. Another project in the books. Take care, folks. So folks, this is the gel coat and the hardener. It actually requires uh, 15 mils of hardener per quart of gel coat for this stuff to set up. Uh, the color is actually called Everglade and you can probably see it there's this grayish bluish gray uh, so that's the color i'm going with this color that she was before so we're going with that and like i said this this hardener that needs to go in this so i need 15 mils of hardener this is the 50 mil bottle so i'll measure it some hardener now we'll mix it up in the paint tray and uh, we'll roll it on and start the process so stay tuned So folks, got the gel coat on, looks good, just got to wait for it to dry now, it uh, hides a lot of the uh, scratches and stuff, now some of the sanding wasn't perfect so she's still a little bit rough on the bottom but this thing is 25 years old so we expect it to be a little bit worn out, it's been through, uh, been through quite an adventure over the years. So. 25, it's probably 35 years old actually. It's an old canoe, my father had it and passed it down to me and uh, I've been using it ever since. So, 15 foot fiberglass, great Canadian canoe. It's now been upgraded with some new keels and I got some other things to go on it there. Uh, I'll talk about those in a few minutes. Now folks, what we have here is what I call Sponson or spontoons or I don't know what you, the proper name for them is, but I did an internet search for them and I finally found what I was looking for. I knew what I was looking for, I just didn't know the exact name of it. So I think they're called sponsons. Anyway, that's what I would call them if I was Googling it. So basically it's foam. And you see by the picture here, it goes along the edge of the gunnel on the uh, canoe. Attaches to the sides and helps with the making the canoe uh, more difficult to fl to slip over. Basically, it makes it more stable in the water. So I'm going to put a set of these on now. I've, I've looked at these for years and years ago now, and uh, decided to finally go uh, take the chat to take the plunge and uh, buy a set and put them on. So that's what we're going to do now. The gel coat is dry. You can see here, nice and dry now. So I'm going to put sponsons on both sides so stay tuned so folks I was gonna have a roll of duct tape around to help out like a third hand I was going to use clamps to clamp it in place 
while I measure it up, sand it up, and everything else. But uh, the clamps are not deep enough here to reach up onto the foam. They won't stay there. So goes back to my trusty third hand duct tape. It's essential in every garage. So basically, all I'm doing first is going to lay this up here, find out where the uh, I know where the center of the canoe is. I need to find the actual length of these guys, and they're curled up, so we're trying to see how long these are. They're about nine feet, I'll say. Give me an estimate. So 15 feet minus nine is six. Six divided by two is three, so three feet from each end. Oh, look at that. That's pretty close. There's a three foot mark. There's my sponge. So I think we'll, I think we're okay. Let's check the other end. Oh yeah. We're an inch different. So we'll just shuff this down a little bit. An inch or so this way. And get, uh, stick the duct tape. Half inch this way or so. Like so. Okay. So, that's a spontoon. That's how it's going to look. I'm up tight to the gums. And I have. Uh, bolts and screws and washers that it goes through the fiberglass and the drill holes of course and we'll put that in place so stay tuned folks and we'll uh, we'll get it done There's no instructions with the uh, kit guys, so uh, I have to look up some YouTube videos. I've looked at this before, so I gotta remind myself which way the bolts are going and stuff. So, we're doing a bit of search on the internet. So folks, the kit comes with um, four eye bolts, and five up here actually, and 10 Robertson head screw, uh, screws. Okay, number two Robertson. And the idea is that you, uh, the four eye bolts go near the center of the canoe, and they, when the eye bolts are inside, they actually look work as hook-on points for uh, bungee straps or whatever, keep your luggage in place. So those two will go near the center of the canoe. And the other five be equally spaced along the spontoon, sponson, sponson, sorry. So I did a quick calculation. Nine feet is 108 inches. 108 inches divided by, well, I got seven bolts, so it's eight spaces. is about 13 and a half inches per bolt. Now, I'm not going to put the bolt right at the end up there. It's actually going to come in three or four more inches in here and put the first bolt. That's the same thing on that end, and I'll divide that rest of that space up equally. Keeping in mind that the two um, eye bolts are going to go in the center. In the center is right there where the yoke is attached to the canoe. So one will go on this side and the other one will go over on this side. Okay. Uh, the other thing to remember this, and I've seen this on all the videos, is that these washers actually have, you can feel it on them, as a rounded side and a sharp side. Okay. I guess that's where they're punched out when they're made or whatever. You can probably see it a little bit there. That's rounded on top there a bit. But if you put your finger on this side, it's a bit sharp. There's an edge to it, of course. Okay. So the thing to remember when you're putting the washers on is that when the washer goes up against the sponson is that the rounded side always compresses into the sponson and same thing on the inside of the canoe. The rounded part goes up against the fiberglass. The sharp edge never touches the fiberglass and never touches the sponson. Uh, so two washers per bolt and not go on the end. Bolts go in through and I cut the bolts off uh, when I get them in place. All right. So I'm going to put you on time lapse here, folks, and uh, take you through the process. Uh, you'll see me do a bunch of measuring and stuff, so I might speed up or edit some of that out, but we'll get it done. Okay. 
folks, I got a 3 16 drill bit here. I'm going to come in about uh, four or five inches from the end. I'll come in six inches from the end, actually. I'll come down there, drill our first hole. So, I want to make sure it's tight to the gunnel. I need to mark my spot. Six inches from the end. There's on my. Yep. And we will make sure the foam is up tight to the gunnel. Straight in through. And there's our first hole. Now everything I've seen tells me that I should start at both ends. Start at this end and go up the other end and put the other side, the other end on. Then do the middle as we go. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, with the washers, there is a rounded edge and a sharp edge. So you put the washer, put the rounded edge on the washer facing the fiberglass inside. I gotta find that. One second. Oh, oh, wrong way. Go the other way. Cut them off inside. Yes. There we go. So the sharp edge is on the outside there. On the inside, same thing. Sharp edge facing away from the canoe. And there's a nut. Now, what I'm going to do on the inside washer, and I haven't seen this anybody else do this, so it's just for my own uh, peace of mind. Is I have some quad caulking. I'm going to put a little bit of caulking around that washer that goes up against the fiberglass just to stop any water that wants to come in there coming in through that little hole now how much water is going to come in there guys honestly not very much if any but it's just for my own peace of mind so then we put the nut on it's a long bolt And now we compress it. So, how much do we compress it? Well, good question. So, how much do we compress it? Well, like that. That's what everybody says. Just in the videos I watched, do not break the foam. Just compress it to so it indents. And again, you can see why we would not put the sharp edge into the foam that way. It would. Uh, it would uh, probably cut the foam. The foam does have a coating on it. So if you look underneath, and I apologize with the camera guys, but if you look underneath, you see, yeah, we have a fairly significant bolt sticking out there. And the caulking is in behind the washer, so that's what I wanted. So I'll trim that off afterwards. And I'll probably put a, some Loctite or something on it, or maybe even a lock washer. I'm, uh, I'm a fan of lock washer, so I'll, maybe I'll just replace it with a lock washer in a second so basically folks that's the process I'm gonna go do that for all of this both sides of the canoe now and uh, we'll have her done well folks we got one side done and you notice here that these bolts are in differently because they are actually the eye bolts. And the eye bolts are actually inside the canoe and they can meant for hooking on your gear or whatever. I don't really know if I needed that. I have lots of places to hook gear on in there. I got the yoke and the seats and stuff, but hey, it'll help. So uh, we'll do that. I'll cut these off, of course. We're not going to have these sticking out and impale somebody as we're going down the river. But yeah, so I got one side done quite happy with it it's a uh, much easier than I expected uh, very very uh, easy to install so uh, 
yeah it's just a bit of measurements first make sure you're centered and everything else so uh, should be good how about do the other side and uh, we'll work out get that done and i'll give you the when we get her all finished i'll trim off all those bolts inside and outside and uh, she's ready for the gander well folks i got the sponsoon sponsoons on floating pieces on my canoe anyway foam i guess gum foam anyway i got them on i got the bolts cut off on the outside i haven't got to the inside ones yet but i miscalculated i for, i counted the bolts wrong and did my measurements and i'm short two bolts so i will have to go to the hardware store and get a couple bolts a few washers not a big deal and put those two remaining bolts in there and she is ready for the gander So folks, thanks for watching. Uh, we, I'll get her, get those two bolts in place now and get her done and she is finished. So thanks for watching, keeping track of the canoe project. Uh, if you are interested, there's three videos on it where I started out uh, sanding and fiberglassing first and I put new keels on her in video number two. And this one, I finished it off with some gel coat and sponsons. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe and like this video if you want to see more content like that. It helps me with, uh, with my numbers. And I think we're at 516 right now, so more subscribers the better. Hit that subscribe button and uh, appreciate all your support. Thanks for watching, guys, and catch you on the next one.